Hi, I'm Peter Birch and welcome to today's show. Here we are going to be looking for something absolutely amazing. That's right, we're looking for the Australian or the common death adder, my most favorite venomous snake of all of Australia. Let's have a look around this area. Come with me over here. This is one of my most favorite areas because it's an absolute beautiful spot. I mean, I can't explain this enough to you guys. I mean, I love all our native plants. I love the ferns, the trees, but what I really love is the Australian or the Sydney sandstone. Death adders love this environment because they get down amongst these rock crevices in this deep leaf litter. And I mean, it is deep, We're about two inches deep. Now, they also like to get down under these grass trees. That's right, these things here, these are a grass tree. This particular tree will grow like this guy here. And underneath, they basically build up all this leaf litter and material. The venomous snakes or the death adders like to get down amongst it because birds will come in here, small rodents and lizards will come in for refuge and hide amongst these things. So anywhere that allows these animals to seek refuge is where an ambush predator, the death adder, the master of camouflage will be waiting. How amazing. This is the perfect habitat for the death adders. And there's a beautiful little death adder right under here. Look at this beautiful little fella. Now he's not very big at all. This would be about the average size of a death adder that you'd find, the common death adders. Now these little beauties here can pump anywhere between 80 to 240 milligrams of venom. Now that venom doesn't sound like a lot of venom, doesn't look like a very big snake, but this snake is rated number five most venomous snake in Australia. And also it's really rated right up there with a lot of the other venomous snakes when we compare it to black mambas and even king cobras. It does rate very highly across the world. So we need to give these animals a lot of respect. The good thing about these particular animals is they don't have a very large strike range. Now this snake here is probably about as long as this stick. And you can imagine that snake can only strike probably half its body length, but let's not blink our eyes because these guys are known to have one of the fastest if not the fastest strike rate in the world 26 hundredths of a second that's right in a lab setting these guys were recorded striking as faster than you can blink your eyes so these guys could particularly bite you retract and bite you the second time before you even felt the first bite that is pretty amazing now the venom of this particular snake here contains a postsynaptic venom so basically affects your nervous system it's neurotoxic with negligible amounts of coagulants, as well as a little bit of neurotoxic and a bit of myelitic activity there as well. So in actual fact, these guys, before antivenom was created here in Australia, 50% of people, that's right, you had a 50-50 chance of surviving a bite. Now these guys can reach a size of about 90 centimeters or 100 centimeters at maximum size. So we're looking at a snake that's over three foot long. And you can imagine with a head like that, it's going to pack a lot of venom and pack a very powerful punch. Now they do have quite large venom glands for the size of these beautiful little snakes. One of the other cool facts is they're a live bearing species, one of few of Australia's live bearing species. These guys will mate basically in October, November and give babies around January, February of every year. And they can have anywhere between 12 to 13 babies on average but with some species, they've been known to have up to 30 live babies. Now, each baby has the potential venom to strike you down, just like the adult. The only difference is, is the quantity of venom does change, does vary a lot. Now, these guys, particularly an ambush predator, they'll sit, coil up, and wait for the food to come to them. As you can see, this guy's a little bit, um, he's a little bit on the move because we've been stirring him up a little bit, but um, they'll just sit there. And they'll sit in the same spot for a couple of months. As long as there's a bit of water there, they're happy just to sit there and wait for the food to cross paths. Now, like I said, that strike, very fast, grab, hold on to. They just really powerhouse down. Those venom glands are here at the back of their head, quite pronounced. And they all sit there and just pump that venom in. And like I said, quite large individuals can pump up to 240 milligrams of that venom, which is quite potential. Now, let's bring that into uh, human terms. You only need about half of that to become a fatality from these beautiful creatures. So that's the reason why we need to treat them with respect. Even though he's not very big, he just sort of looks very sort of cumbersome at the moment because he's making a bit of a run for it. But absolute gorgeous animals. So when we compare these guys to the European adders, or even the adders of Africa, like the puff adder, the death adder, the Australian death adder, is not a true viper. It's actually an alapid. So that has front fangs. So it's a front fang venomous snake. Now the other snakes are actually part of the viper family. So they're completely different. They have hinged fangs where they can retract and the fangs move independently. Well, these guys are slightly fixed. They um, have slight ability to move their fangs when they're injecting their venom. Now the other cool fact is um, these particular animals here. I mean, I used to breed a lot of these back in the early 90s. And I used to donate them to a, a reptile park where they would then use those animals for venom production. Now it was found that wild caught animals particularly didn't want to release large quantities of venom. So the captive bred animals were quite capable of releasing quite larger quantity. So therefore they became more desirable, I guess, for venom production and also 
you know, when we're taking these animals out of the wild, we're making an impact. Now these guys are in big trouble in the bush. Now you can imagine these beautiful areas that we see here with the grass and the open shrubs and stuff like that. We've got a lot of impact with land and houses moving through. Now when we move further north we have big impacts with things like cane toads. That's right, even the cane toads affecting these guys. Now these guys typically like to eat things like small birds, they'll eat lizards, they'll eat small mammals, so small mice. We have little small antichinus and things like that. So there's a lot of cool little things around. Now as you can see I really love this guy's mode of locomotion. It's a little bit slow and cumbersome and at times he has sort of this weird sort of crawly method. Now most venomous snakes sort of have a big wriggle and they move very quickly through the bush. These guys are typically a nice slow and steady mover. And you can see he's got a little bit of a scar on his back there, but doesn't really affect him at all. Now, sexing these death adders is quite easy. We just look at the base of the tail here. It's got like a nice long, thin, slender tail. So therefore, that is a male, so it's nice and long. If it came around and stopped really quickly and had this little stumpy bit, that would be a female. One of the fascinating things about these death adders is how they bring the prey in close to themselves. Now, they're an ambush predator. They've got to sit there and they've got to wait. They've got to be absolutely so patient. Now, what they have on the base of their tail is this tiny little worm-like thing, and it's called a cordial lure. So they'll sit there, flick their tail around towards their head, and they'll wriggle this little thing, and it looks like a worm, and it'll bounce around in front of them. Now, that'll obviously make sure that things like birds and lizards and small rodents will come a little bit closer when they're not just crossing paths and they'll come closer, close enough that this guy can then strike out, bam, with that fast strike. And remember, he's got one of the fastest strikes. He'll strike out, grab that prey and pump that venom with his big giant venom glands just by chewing, just continuously pumping those huge quantities of venom in there, trying to mobilize and also start the digestion process, eating his prey. I hope you guys enjoyed today's show about these gorgeous Australian venomous snake. Now, just because I'm nice and close doesn't mean I'm gonna take this very lightly, but we need to always treat these animals with caution and respect. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and thanks so much for joining the adventure.